Hey guys, I'm back. Haven't done any videos in a little while. Um, well, I'm just back from Down East Fantasy Con. Um, if you guys didn't know, I live up here in Maine. If you don't know where the state of Maine is in the United States, <clears throat> I'm roughly 150 miles north of Boston, so it kind of gives you a rough idea of where you can find me. So the Down East Fantasy Con just happened. Uh, my friend put it on, and that's where I spent my weekend. I had my R2D2 out there. Uh, met a bunch of people and what I'm going to do now is if you hang on let the intro go and I'll tell you all about it Plus I have some interviews. I did you ready. Let's do this Hey guys, welcome to where nerdy is cool this is me. I am Paul, your humble host. <laughs> uh, sorry I haven't done a video in a little while. I've had a lot of stuff going on. And as I mentioned, last weekend I was at Downey's Fantasy Con. That was held in Ellsworth, which is about 35 miles from my location. And I brought my full-size aluminum R2-D2 over, so we had R2 on display and uh, got to meet a, you know, a lot of people. The, uh, the con itself wasn't bad. and. Uh, I'm not, it's tough in Maine to have an event like this because we don't have a very long summer. So when the weather is nice, people are out of here. They're either going to the beach or they're traveling or vacation, you know, what have you. So, you know, cons always struggle up here, you know, having to deal with our very short, you know, uh, summer season. That said, the event, uh, unfortunately, he had a great location lined up, but it fell through. I think the building sold or something. And his backup location was at the Ramada Inn, and the uh, uh, the event uh, did not have any air conditioning, and it was a very hot summer day, so it was very warm inside. So, despite all those things, we had an okay turnout. And remember that you know if you're planning and you want to do your very first con or something like that, what you're doing with your first con is you're just kind of you know testing the waters, finding out you know what kind of reaction the public has to you. And I think this one had a good reaction. Um, I think if the location was maybe a little bit different, if it had air conditioning, maybe some better marketing to get it out of there, there's, there's a lot of things that could be done on this one to make it better. Having said that, it was a good con. It was extremely child friendly, so you, know, you didn't have to worry you know, uh, about you know, is there anything interesting for the kids to do. They built the Down East Fantasy Con to be built completely around. It's safe to bring your family. Uh, you don't have to cover their eyes or, or, or worry about what they might see out there. Um, they, they planned it out very well. Um, as for R2 and I, uh, we sat out there, we met a lot of people, a lot of great people came over for pictures. Uh, one of the things that uh, I managed to do with R2 is uh, on the second day, I don't know how I did this, but I blew the dome drive. Uh, the, the head is not moving now. So I don't know if I uh, sheared uh, one of the shafts that the motor goes to to the gear. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out because in two weeks I have another event down in southern Maine with the uh, Portland Sea Dogs, which is a minor league baseball team, and they're having their Star Wars Day event. So, so anyway, that's what I've been up to. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll the tape on two interviews I did. Well, actually, it's probably three now. Uh, the first one is with the uh, Challenger Learning Center, uh, a very interesting uh, facility where uh, the kids can learn all about space flight. And for me, as someone who's a, I'm a, I'm a licensed pilot, and I love the idea that organizations like this exist to plant the seed about aviation and space. So uh, what I'll do is I'll now fade into that interview and you guys can listen to her talk. Hello, welcome Hi. to Downey's Fantasy Con and tell us about the Challenger Learning Center of Maine. All right, so we're here at, at Fantasy Con today because we like to do Lego challenges. And so today we're doing a blind build challenge with a superhero theme. And, um, so people are building for five minutes, whatever they can, either with a mask or in a box so that they can't see. And then every half hour, it's a, comp a real competition for a prize. And we have a collection so far of things that people have made. Some are quite recognizable as a human-like figure, and others are a little more abstract. So we're just having a lot of fun because at Challenger, we do a lot of different types of Lego builds. So this is a new one for us. Now you guys are located in Bangor. Yes. You guys have a lot of events. You have yep. the simulator and this, uh, the launch and the control center. That's and all right. That. That's right. So we have um, 
um, our main, we're mainly known for our, our simulators. So I'm here in my flight suit, we have a mission control room. We have a, a launch area and a space lab where people come and run a mission. That could be school groups, it can be families or clubs, it can be adults in a business or a group of friends. And we run missions all the time. And then we also do family nights, public events. We do a Lego after school club um, and lots and lots of camps for all ages. And then we're about to come on to our 15th anniversary. So we're gonna have a lot of events in the next year. Uh, 2019 will be 15 years for the center. And also the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So we'll have a lot going on in the next year. If they want to reach out to you or if they want to find more information, yeah. they can find you on the web. Yes, astronaut.org is our website. We also have a Facebook page where we post most of what's going on. Uh, so a couple different, and then there's, or you can go online and sign up for email notifications as well. So where was a fun center like that when I was a kid, right? You know, practice missions, you know, a control, you know, a whole control center. So uh, they got a really cool thing going on there at the uh, Challenger Learning Center. And we're fortunate to have one up here in Maine. Now the, uh, the next two that I'm gonna run, these guys, uh, they had a really cool display going on. They had all of the VR gear. They had the, uh, the Sony PlayStation one. Uh, I mean, they, <laughs> they were the main attraction really. I was right beside these guys and I had guys with uh, uh, you know, the whole you know, uh, mask or VR experience going on and uh, I felt like I had zombies next to me because they were, they were doing this whole thing and you know, they, they obviously couldn't see and they were talking and there was no one else there besides me and R2 so uh, it was interesting. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to roll a tape on the interview I did with Winterhouse Gaming and OC Gaming. These guys are interesting, they're a young crew and they get some really good ideas. So off we go. We're at Downey's Con 2018. We are. There's a whole bunch of virtual games lined up over here. These guys are running them. So tell me what's going on and who you are. Okay, I guess that's me first. Uh, we are Winterhouse Gaming. Uh, we started in Winterport. Uh, we do a weekly podcast. We're also Twitch affiliates, which means we do live gameplay on the internet. We brought uh, VR. We do Skyrim. It's a fantastic game. If you haven't tried it, you should definitely pick it up. Or if you got a friend that's got it, try that out. Uh, we're RC Gaming. It's uh, me and my brother. Uh, we have a custom gaming controller business. Uh, we sell... Use that big voice. Use your big voice. Uh, sorry. Do you want to go again? Or no, 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 no. Right. I get that fan chirping right over us, so if I, if I boost the mic, we're going to hear you. Like, okay. They, 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 they see right. those and they know. Uh, we sell custom gaming controllers like Xbox and PlayStation. Uh, we've been doing that for about three years. Uh, we decided to come down here to the Downey's Fantasy Con and run some tournaments and games for everyone. I'm a player myself. I usually yeah. call myself So you, so you make custom controls? How expensive are these? Uh, they they range from about $60 to $80. Um, yeah. Fairly reasonably priced. Yeah. 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 yeah, so lots, lots of different colors, a few different like themes, like dark mode controllers, things like that. Um, and we're you know, expanding the different consoles, different games, and all that sort of stuff. So. Now, do you guys have a central location where you guys game from? Do you have a storefront? or? Uh, we have, we actually just went to that first place. Um, we were working out of our parents' basement. <laughs> we all start there, don't we? So, yeah. We're yeah. in Hamden. Uh, we just moved to Thurland. Uh, we have our own little uh, workshop. And yeah, we do everything from there now. And we do it, um, actually the cool thing about what we do is we can do it out of the comfort of our own homes uh, in different locations. Um, so we really don't need to have like a storefront or anything like that. Um, the podcast, I have a little studio at my house. Um, a really cool table, it's got boom mics on it. You look at it and it's really cool. Um, and then, you know, he's got a little setup at his house in his bedroom. Um, all we have to do is hit play and, and go at it. That's, that's kind of what we do. Now, where do folks find you on the internet? On uh, Facebook? Or? Well, absolutely. Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Winterhouse Gaming is the name. Yeah, so it's just facebook.com slash Winterhouse Gaming, Instagram. Yeah, if you, want to, if you want to listen to the podcast that we do weekly, you can find it on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Winterhouse Gaming. You can also iTunes and Google Play. And actually, all the major podcast things, you can find us almost anywhere. So, really, you guys host events where there's like this where you have all this equipment usually or? We do actually. Um, Warehouse Gaming has been doing 
um, these types of ponds for probably about a year. Um, we've done all the major ones in the area. We've even gone down to Portland. Um, small uh, Mario Kart tournaments we've definitely done. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can almost find us at any con, whether we're helping, having free gameplay, or sitting down doing uh, live interviews with people as they walk by. So I guess my next step would be, let's have you show off some of the equipment. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So this right here is uh, PlayStation VR. Um, so basically you, you purchase the console and then you purchase the headset. Um, once you put it on, you're kind of immersed in like this whole different world. Um, As you can see, he's looking up right now. Because, yeah, this is this is Skyrim. So basically if I move this, where, where am I? Where am I? Okay, so it looks like I'm in a dungeon. You can actually see the dungeon. Um, this one might have glitched on the outside of the dungeon. That happens on games. Um, but with this particular game, you can hold swords. You can hold any sort of... What is going on? <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. It's actually kind of funny, though. This doesn't happen very often. Thank goodness it's not live TV. Um, yeah, thank goodness it's not live TV. Um, but people love this Skyrim. Bethesda Engineering. <laughs> Bethesda Engineering, right. So, it's a lot of fun. I mean, anyone of all ages can do this. And if you like medieval, Skyrim's kind of the way to go. So, if you're a complete noob like myself and don't even have a PlayStation, I notice you have the headset, and I notice you have on top of the monitor, you have the device that obviously reads the positional info. Yep, that's yeah. just the PlayStation camera. Yeah, the PlayStation camera actually looks at these little tiny blue, uh, you know, lights here. Okay. And it actually does all the tracking. You know, you get too far away from it, and it starts acting a little wonky. Okay, so um, it's similar. I, I guess the only thing I can think of would be similar to like track IR that the PC guys have. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you always have to have kind of sensors somewhere. The controller actually has one also. Oh, cool. um, for this particular game, you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, but there's also motion controllers that you can use to have kind of a, uh, a more customized experience. You feel like you're really immersed. But it's very cool. I, I highly recommend people picking it up. Um, there's over a hundred. 50 games, I think, right now for virtual reality on PlayStation, and it grows up every single day. Now, for the more techie people, I know the first thing they're going to ask is what's like the resolution on that? The resolution inside here is actually 720. There's two screens on the inside here. Mm -hmm. It does 720 per eye. Um, so, with the PlayStation 4 Pro, you kind of get better tracking um, and a little bit sharper of a resolution. It goes probably hits 900 at times with the PlayStation Pro, but generally you're at a 720. Um, anything close to your eye like that, it's, it's kind of okay. But it's going to get better, I promise. <laughs> well, yeah, because the only thing I can reference is the Oculus Rift. And I know Correct. That, there's a lot of guys that either love it or hate it, but the problem is that, you know, it's so close to your eyes, you got the magnifiers. Very close. You can, just, you can just see the pixelization on some games. Yeah, you, you really can. Um, you, with the PlayStation 4, the original one, you can actually see a little more pixelization with this one, it's a little bit less with the Pro, the PS4 Pro, so you get a better experience. Another thing that a lot of people um, are kind of weary about is glasses. If you have glasses, you, your glasses actually fit in here fine. Um, I play it with glasses, and it, it's a really good experience either way. So pe people always take off their glasses, and I'm like, no, you don't have to do that. Yeah, I saw a few people here while I was sitting next door watching a people game, and uh, yeah. I kept noticing they were like, oh, I can wear this. So yeah, good. yeah, it's really cool. But it's awesome. awesome. Where's a rig like that? Uh, uh, well, this actually device here, if you want to buy this with the camera, um, it's probably around $300, I believe. Um, and then you can get bigger bundles that cost around $500. Nice. So the console itself, if you purchase that, I think I paid $450 for the console. Um, so you're looking at close to $1,000 when, when you really get done. Yeah, but it's gaming. It's gaming. And if you want to do PC virtual, it's add another $500 easy. Yeah. Or a little bit more. I, I do notice the PC one came down. They, they, they're $3 yeah. so, yeah. so that must mean something new is cooking. So. It is, yeah. And Acer, Acer and uh, Asus are actually working on something for Microsoft to actually make cheaper ones. Nice. Um, so it's going to be really cool. We're excited. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, those guys have a ton of energy. And they, like I said, they had brought all their personal equipment to, to do all this stuff. And the guys that make custom controllers, I was chatting with them and saying, you know, I, I just want to plant the seed here for you. But, you know, a lot of people with these games, one of the things that I hear people complain about with gaming is that the controller doesn't fit their hand very well. And, you know, maybe they want to think about talking to me or other people about 3D printing controllers that do fit people's hands. Maybe someone else is doing that. I don't know. They'll have to do their research. But I kind of blurted that out to them and they kind of gave me a look like, 
you know, that, that might be something really interesting. So I hope that helps them. So again, I thank you for watching my YouTube channel. As you can see, we're starting to grow. We're closing on a thousand subscribers. I really appreciate you guys giving me your feedback, watching my videos. Um, I've, I've seen a couple of you guys being active on my Instagram and on my Facebook pages. Uh, those are, by the way, Facebook. Uh, you can find me at Where Nerdy Is Cool. Instagram, same thing, Where Nerdy Is Cool. And of course, the website, Where Nerdy Is Cool.com. If you want to help me out, I also have a Patreon page. So if you wish to give me a little financial boost there, I certainly appreciate it. There's also a link on the YouTube homepage for if you want to donate via PayPal. Again, if you want to help, I appreciate it. I thank you guys for watching. I'm working on some more fun stuff as I showed you in the live blog a couple days ago. I got a lot of filament here I got to start using up. And hopefully once I get some printers calibrated, we can start working more seriously on getting BB-8 further along. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching, and remember, this is where nerdy is cool.